Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Gundam News. And this week, the original Gundam series turned 45, and in less than two weeks, G Gundam will turn 30. So to celebrate this, Gundam.info made a special video where they promised to announce some really cool things. And at almost one hour in length, I couldn't wait to see just how many of those cool announcements are, they were going to make, all brought to us by the voice actors of Omro, Domon, and Suleta. And then it turned into a talk show for 37 minutes. Now, don't get me wrong, it definitely was cool to hear the voice actors talk about their experiences when working for Gundam. Uh, for example, Toru Furia, the voice of Omro, was surprised about Omro's role when auditioning for him. The director told him that Omro didn't want to pilot the Gundam, which was a weird thing at the time because robot animes back then, they all had like very hot-blooded go-getter main characters who really wanted to pilot that mech or robot and then really wanted to fight against the enemy aliens which was of course a very different thing from what Gundam was trying to go for. And so yeah, this was of course an important nuance to know when you're going to be voicing that character. So yeah, it was an interesting segment for sure, but not exactly what I was tuning in for. And I'm sure some of you are having the exact same feeling right now. Like, yeah, Kakarot, it's all nice that you're describing what the voice actors were talking about, but we want to hear what they announced. Okay, so brace yourselves, because here we go. They showed off this illustration of the RX-78 II during its fight with the Black Tri-Stars. They announced that the Gundam Next Future Road to 2025 will uh, take place starting June the 8th, which is actually kind of meta when you think about it, because um, I feel like there's going to be a high chance that there's going to be some actual announcements there. There was this illustration featuring Hiro, Domon, and Garrett announcing that the Gundam GWC 30th anniversary project will be held with various things uh, being released in the next three years. But unfortunately, they did not elaborate any further than that. And then there was this G Gundam 30th anniversary logo and a new character profile announcing that a new G Gundam project is in the works with the involvement of Domon's original voice actor. But again, they didn't elaborate on what exactly it's going to be. So don't get too excited yet. We don't know if it's going to be a 50 episode anime, a 12 episode anime, a movie, or God forbid, a Twilight Axis. Uh, what legit made me the most excited then was that, well, I was kind of zoning out near the end and I was focused more on the model kit that I was making than the actual video. So suddenly, near the end of the video, I hear the announcer say, next up, I'm going to introduce you to the next new Gundam title. And for a split second, I was like, this is it. The video is almost ending and they're going to end it with a bang. Not only are they announcing a new anime, but since she said introduce, we're also going to get some details about this new anime. So I look up and what do I see? Gundam Requiem for Vengeance. So unfortunately, if you just want it, the newest and latest Gundam news, then this 55 minute video could have been condensed into less than one minute. Or, you know, 55 seconds instead of 55 minutes. Uh, but if you do want to watch the whole thing, then I will have it linked down below. Just keep in mind that the video is region locked to Japan, at least at the moment of me uh, recording this, so you'll need a service like NordVPN to get around that. 
And if you don't have it yet, you can use the link down below or the code KKRT to not just get a sweet discount, but to also support the channel. And then just today, we got some more information on Iron Blooded Orphans Order Hunt. They announced that it will be turned into a movie, and on the official website, they uploaded the profiles of the main characters and the main mobile suits. So you can also check those out with the link down below. And there are quite a few uh, to check out. Way too many to cover in this video. Over at the figure front then, things were really heating up. With the announcement of the B-style Mir Campbell bare-legged bunny version. And as the name indicates, this is the previously released bunny figure of Mir, but now without her fishnet thigh highs. Something that definitely gives the figure a whole new vibe. Uh, she goes for 36,300 yen, 239 US, is slated for a December release, making her a perfect Christmas gift, and is limited to premium Bandai and Ami Ami. Less sexy then, or maybe more sexy for certain people, I don't judge, uh, is the Gundam Universe Gundam X figure. It'll come with its beam rifle, shield, and at least one remova removable beam saber with beam effect part, which is blue at the bottom and pink for the rest of the effect part. Pre-orders are up at Japanese hobby stores as we speak, so it'll be a link down below, and it'll slowly walk your way in November for 4,950 yen, 33 US. Oh, and while I will typically rag on some of the proportions of the Gundam Universe figures, I really like what they did here, considering the source they had to work with. Uh, and for Gunpla, we also got a really cool announcement, depending on how much you like clear parts. Because this year again, the Ichiban Kuji is going to do a Gunpla Ichiban Kuji. And the rules are the same as always. You buy a ticket for 800 yen, 5 US, and on that ticket it tells you which prize you won, and you always win something. The first prize is a solid clear full mechanics aerial, where the yellow has been replaced with an interesting looking fluorescent green color, and this is also the case for all of the other model kits of the lineup. And how it looks? really varies from machine to machine. Second prize then is a solid clear real grade God Gundam, followed by a solid clear high grade Rising Freedom Gundam, Barf Loops Rex, Wing Gundam Zero, a high grade RX-78-2 Ichiban Kuji original color, which I think is kind of reminiscent of the color scheme of the prototype Gundam, a solid clear entry grade new Gundam, and then for the consolation prizes, we don't have any pictures, but we do have a description. There's sticker sets, acrylic stands, and option part set. And despite the option parts being listed as like the lowest price, or like the you lost price, but you're still getting something price, depending on what they are, they could actually be a really cool thing and significantly better than the acrylic stands or the sticker sets. And then if you get the final ticket, you'll also get this full mechanics aerial solid clear version another, which is the reverse of the first prize. There, the white was solid and the other colors were clear, but with this another version, it is the white that is clear and the other colors that are still normal. And you can build these model kits with the upcoming Char Custom Cutter Knife Edition 2, which is unfortunately Premium Bandai Limited. Pre-orders went live today for 2,475 yen, 16 US, and it is currently slated for an August release. Gundam Seed Freedom then has already entered its 12th week, and that means a new freebie for moviegoers a new set of these film reel thingies. And in addition to that, they now also have one of those quizzes to see which Gundam Seed Freedom character you are, um, which I will have linked down below, of course. I'm Isaac.
<laughs> and last week there was also a presentation on the CG used in the movie. And apparently it wasn't an easy thing to do. The Archangel took over a year to make, the Millennium a year and eight months, and the Immortal Justice had to be redone over 20 times. And at this presentation, they also revealed that the Destiny Impulse was originally planned to make an appearance, but this idea would then eventually be scrapped because there already was the Destiny Gundam. And, well, that they then would be too similar. So instead, they went with the Impulse Spec 2. And I mean, to be honest, I think the Destiny Impulse would have been significantly more interesting than just a differently colored Impulse, which sure does have some upgrades on paper. Which from Mercury, meanwhile, got some new merchandise announcements. Um, and the first two sets are available from Granup, which does offer international shipping, so we'll also have that link down below. The first collection features new chibi fight illustrations of Suleta, Mirine, Guel, Elan, Shadik, Nika, and Choo Choo, which you can get on an acrylic stand for 1320 yen, 9 US, a pen with keychain for 880 yen, 6 US, an acrylic pen stand for 1320 yen, 9 US, although I don't see where you'd put your pen on these things, a sticker for 330 yen, 2 US, a B5 pencil board for 550 yen, 4 US, an IC card sticker for 880 yen, 6 US, and a clear file for 440 yen, 3 US, all of which are slated for a May release. And then the second collection features those same characters, but now in their Mecha Gurumi forms. There's keychains for 715 yen, 5 US, can badges for 440 yen, 3 US, keychains for 495 yen, 3 US, and acrylic stands for 1485 yen, 10 US. And these things will be shipping out in June. Also shipping out in May then is the third volume of the Astacasia Radio Committee, which can be pre-ordered through Automart. The set goes for 4,950 yen, 32 US, and consists of two CDs. One uh, with newly recorded things, and one with episode 35 to 53. And as a bonus, three postcards are also included, each featuring the cover illustration of one of the three Asakasha Radio Committee volumes. And then finally, there's a new set of card-ass cards up for pre-order over at P Bandai, featuring the Witch from Mercury characters in the old-school SD Gundam Gaiden Neo style. The first set goes for 6,000 yen, 39 US, consists of 40 cards with a binder and is slated for a July release. On the gaming front then, in the PlayStation version for Gundam Battle Operation 2, the Engage Gundam Booster has joined the fray, and the Steam version has been entered into the 2024 Japan Game Awards. Which was a very funny thing to see after watching many kudos' latest video on the 10 worst rated Steam games. Like, I knew the Steam version was downvoted to hell, but I didn't know that it was downvoted to such an extent that it became the ninth most disliked game on Steam. So they're kinda in the running to win something, it's just they're trying to win the wrong thing. And another Gundam game that had a bit of an oopsie was the global version of UC Engage. Apparently the wrong event rewards were being given out. Out now then are the unit assembly for the UR Rosamia Bottom and her UR Gapland, as well as a Battle Rush event for Diamonds and UR Custom Tickets, provided they now give out the correct rewards. Next up then, Bamco is having a digital sale on the PS4, PS5 and the Switch, and they announced that they'll be having another collaboration with the popular Puzzle and Dragons mobile game. More details will be unveiled at a later date, but you can already check out the announcement video with some cool art of the participating machines, which is of course linked down below. 
And in other news, an art exhibition about the works of Yoshikazu Yasuhiko will be held at the Hyogo Prefectural Museum of Art from June the 8th until September the 1st. And Japan once again brings the fight to resellers in the most pointless way possible. The Resale Forbidden Customizable Stamp, which I found through an article on Dengeki Hobby. And the example they use, of course, is... Gumpla, one of the worst sufferers of resellers in Japan. But now by buying the stamp and earmarking all of the things they're selling, stores can finally eliminate all scalpers. Because there's absolutely no way of getting around this thing by simply covering it up or, you know, not caring about it. Because scalpers are totally known as being the most moral and upstanding citizens around. This stamp is kind of the equivalent of putting a sticker on your bike that says stealing forbidden or those video games that have for use in Japan only on them, which has definitely prevented me from playing them outside of Japan. Like the crippling guilt was just too much to bear. Um, but if you do want one of these stamps, they go for 2000 yen, 13 US, and can be used about 500 times with the built-in ink cartridge. Unfortunately, it is non-replaceable, but I guess you can just use it with an ink pad afterwards. I will say, as useless as they're going to be, it is kind of a interesting novelty nonetheless. And I guess it's also, unfortunately, a sign of the times. As for the other things you could get this week then, on Wednesday, Sunstar Bungu released some Gundam Seed merchandise. For 400 yen a pop through US, you can get a random can batch fe featuring either Kira or Atherin, or a pack of two stickers featuring a variety of art from Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny. Uh, there is no reading material this week, so we immediately go to this week's apparel. And as a reminder, there is a link to my guide on how to get this stuff outside of Japan in the description down below. And as per usual, Strict G kicked things off on last week Friday. This time with a collaboration with Agility Japan for a bunch of Gundam Seed Freedom inspired leather accessories. All of which are made with grade A adult cows from Hokkaido, which I'm then gonna assume are the best Japanese cows because they're advertising it like that. There is a pass case for 7,700 yen, 50 US, a key case for 6,050 yen, 40 US, and a multi-pouch for 14,300 yen, 94 US. All of which are available in either Compass Blue or Foundation Black, and they'll be available in physical strict G stores on the 27th. Meanwhile, at Bonquota then, reservations began for two G Gundam Lame t-shirts. They go for 4,180 and a pop, 28 US. The available designs are the God Gundam and the Master Gundam, and they're slated for a June release. A few days later then, this Albert Heinlein mug and PVC pouch went up for pre-order. The mug goes for 2,200 yen, 14 US, and the pouch for 1,650 yen, 11 US, and features a bunch of its lines from the movie. And because there are so many of them on this design, it makes me wonder if this is like a joke about him speaking a lot in the movie, or maybe that it just keeps droning on, because usually it's just like one or two catchphrases, or maybe it's just a new style that they're trying out. But whatever the case might be, it is slated for a May release. Yesterday then, pre-orders went live for two more Mighty Strike Freedom things. There's a Lame t-shirt for 4,400 yen, 29 US, and a Lame tote bag for 3,300 yen, 22 US, both of which are slated for a June release. And then finally today, there was this Lacus Klein acrylic stand with some of her famous quotes from the Freedom movie, and a face that has definitely seen some better days. War is hell. And it's also slated for a June release. 
And as always, let's quickly wrap things up with the polls. With the massive amount of newly announced Gunpla a few weeks ago, Gunham.info wanted to know which kit we're the most excited for. And the results weren't completely what I was expecting. The winner with 43% was the real great RX-78 II version 2.0, which is a result that we all saw coming from a mile away. It is an awesome redesign of the original Gundam, and real greats nowadays are some of the best kits that Bandai has ever produced. What surprised me then was the second place. The SD Gundam Cross Silhouette Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam with 29%, whereas the Figurei Standard Lunamaria Hawk only got 25.3%. And I really expected Lunamaria to be second, and with quite a margin actually. Even without her, you know, fan service nature, Figurei Standard kits are just a higher quality than the SD Gundam kits, but I guess you just can't beat the freedom. All the way in last place then is the high-grade Gundam Amazing Barb's Loops. Whew. Tears of Orphans indeed. I was so shocked by the result that I forgot to write down the exact percentage, but I do remember it being 2 point something. So let's blame this abysmal result on the anime that it appeared in. Moving on to the currently ongoing poll then, Gundam.info wants to know what our favorite line from the original Gundam is. And you will have to excuse the paraphrasing because of course the quotes are all in Japanese here and I don't remember the exact phrase they used in English. We have Char saying that it doesn't matter how powerful the Gundam's beam rifle is if it doesn't hit, Omro complaining to Bright after he hit him, the thing that Omro says when he launches, or the Xeon soldier telling Char that the higher-ups just don't understand that legs are just for decoration. On mobile suits. And there is a definite pattern here when we look at both the Gundam.info version of the poll and the Twitter version of the poll. The two Omro quotes are fighting it out for third place, and the two quotes involving Char are duking it out for first place. And personally, I went with the it doesn't matter how strong it is if it doesn't hit quote. Because it just feels like a quote you can use with so many other anime as well. And of course, if you want to cast your vote, I will have the links down below. And that has been all for this week's Gundam News. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great evening. And I'll see you all next week with more Gundam news. Thank you.